Good morning. It's Amy from Go With Less. And today we're going to be having a conversation with Eric. Eric is a very active member in the Go With Less group. He has unbelievable redemptions. It seems like week after week with all of his travel, thanks to points and miles, mostly earned from credit card spending and new sign up bonuses. So I asked Eric to share with our audience how he's doing it. How is he finding these good deals? What are his best practices? And here he is today with a really helpful uh, deck of slides. If we have time afterwards, we're going to do some Q&A. So I'm going to turn it right over to Eric. And if you do have any questions on the live, please post them in the chat. I'm going to be gathering those up for Eric later. So we're going to not uh, mess up his flow uh, and ask those questions later. So uh, you ready to go, Eric? I am. Thank you, Amy. Uh, one of the things I really love about Go With Less is that you and Tim emphasize meeting people in real life. And when we met about two years ago here in San Francisco, when you were on a house sit here, I believe you were the first Miles Points people that I ever met in real life. And it was like I had met my people. We get and it. thank you so much for the community you created with the Go With Less group on Facebook. It's I learned so much there, and I'm I'm so pleased to be able to share what little I do know. Okay, well, I I think you know a lot, so that's why you're here. But uh, yeah, so yeah, and I think our audience is going to love this. So, uh, and just a little heads up, we talk a lot about earning points and miles, but we don't talk a lot about how to to spend them so wisely. Uh, I do a uh, Friday post every week in the Go With Less group about like show us your travel or uh, post your travel uh, wins, and that's a good place for them. But uh, yeah, but like the, the like the process of it, this is this is a first. So I think it's great to get this other side of it. I look forward to that Friday post so much because <laughs> I've learned so much from people sharing in there. And I love sharing what we're doing, too. So thank you again for that Friday post. Awesome. I'm going to mute just, and turn it right over. OK, uh, just a little bit about me. Um, I'm married. My wife uh, and I live here in San Francisco, which is a huge uh, United hub which means we fly a lot with United and Star Alliance. So you'll hear a lot of those today. Um, I have both my US and EU passport, which again, allows us to stay in the EU a little bit longer than most. We're not fully nomadic yet. Right now we're traveling about a hundred days a year. Um, I retired in 2021. My wife works in public relations and she can still work remotely, which is great. Um, we're not huge experts on hotel points. Um, but we do have Hilton Diamond through the Amex uh, Aspire card, which we enjoy using. Um, one of the things that we don't do um, is we don't use the portals in third-party booking. Um, we almost always book direct, especially with airlines, with the one exception of the uh, Amex $200 credit you get with the Platts. So that is basically us in a nutshell. Um, we started in 2011. I remember seeing an ad for a British Airways credit card that offered 100,000 miles. And that number kind of blew my mind. And British Airways sounded really exotic. Like, I want to go to places that British Airways goes. Um, in that time, the two of us, my wife and I, have opened 60 credit cards. We're working on our 60th uh, sign of bonus right now. Um, accumulated almost 6 million points. Uh, those 60 cards, majority are Chase and Amex, uh, 27 Chase cards, 18 Amex, not all currently open, of course, and a few others here and there, but we really like the flexible points, transferable points that we get with uh, Chase and Amex, and especially there's a couple airlines that have both uh, Chase and Amex as transfer partners, like Air France, and we hit those heavily. Um, we've also opened checking accounts both with Chase and Amex to earn points. Uh, I think two days ago, my Amex business checking uh, bonus just posted. I got 60,000 uh, Amex MR points for opening a checking account with uh, American Express Business. So right now I have 19 cards open and my wife has nine. So a total of about 28. Um, we really use four or five, but um, we're trying to preserve the credit history and use the cards as much as possible. And generally, we get about a million points banked 
which we're using to book the following year's flights. We're all booked through 2023 right now, and we're working on 2024. So we're earning points now probably for 2025, and the points we have we'll use for next year's flights. And we're often booking 340, 360 days in advance as the flights are released by the airlines. Um, I was a planner in the real world when I was working, and uh, I like having a plan A. So we book really early, and we find that often the good deals are there early. They kind of go away, and then if you wait, they come back. This is the history of how many cars we've opened by year. Again, this is two players. Um, you know, we hit it hard when we started. We didn't have much of an idea of how to emphasize, you know, where we should be looking to uh, prioritize our cards. And now we're opening five to six a year between the two of us, which is uh, manageable. And I'm going to go through a couple of ways that we hit the sign-up bonuses year after year that, that work for us. Uh, people ask about my credit uh, score all the time when I've mentioned this hobby. And it, it, it vacillates between like 820 and 840. When we open a new card, we see our credit score drop 20, 30 points for a month or two, and then it pops back up. So um, we think having a very low credit utilization score actually helps our credit. And uh, we haven't seen any issues in the 11 years that we've been doing this. Um, some shortcuts and multipliers that we use, we hit transfer bonuses heavily. Um, it's hard work earning points, keeping track of the cards. So any way we can stretch those points, we take advantage of. And the transfer bonuses have been huge for us, generally in the 25 to 30 percent range, and sometimes as high as 40 percent. I'm going to walk you through one of those examples. So we'll take the points we've earned, we will dump them to an airline that we will we know we'll use in the next year or two, and we'll get the advantage of the transfer bonuses. Those have worked out really well for us. To meet our sign-up bonuses, we have two uh, annual property tax payments, a uh, fairly low fee, it's less than 2%. We'll put those on a credit card to hit sign-up bonus. We also have our quarterly IRS federal tax payments. We'll use those to hit our sign-up bonuses. We live in a small one-bedroom apartment. Our HOA has a quarterly insurance policy that has a premium. We've used our credit cards to pay that insurance policy in the past. And we tend to uh, emphasize the airlines where we can combine the points that we have, Chase and Amex, and they both go to Air France, Iberia, Air Canada, Air Lingus. So we kind of focus our area in those places because we want to maximize the points as much as possible. And if I'm going too fast, let me know. And I'll keep chugging along. Okay, this is one. Hold on, Eric. Uh, hold on a second. Hold, yeah. Eric, um, so uh, do you get, I, I don't remember if this is covered later, but the transfer partner bonuses between uh, on the transferable points. Do you, does, do you have a slide that you get into that for a more basic, uh, so we don't lose people on those transfer partner sure, bonuses? I, 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 one, of, one of our best redemptions was a 40% transfer from Amex to Iberia. And I can walk through that. See, there is a slide coming up. All right, perfect. And I'm also going to talk about that. I have some of my own Q&As to talk with you about. So I just want to make sure. So if you're a little confused, stick with it. Um, this is so I get the redemption side is, is deep. Um, so there will be an opportunity to clear some things up if you're if anyone is confused. Well, here's a good one. This is Air France. And this is the history of the Air France transfer bonuses from Amex. They've had them back almost yearly from Amex to Air France. And then Chase had one last May. So you can see in a one-year period from September 2021 to September 2022, you could have transferred three times from Chase or Amex to Air France. And during that period, we transferred a little over half a million Chase and Amex points, and it created 640,000 Air France points, Air France slash KLM. So just by doing that, we created another 130,000 points by using the transfer bonus. So that basically meant we could fly from San Francisco to Europe in each direction for 64,000 
Amex points, which became 80,000 Air France points. So those are the points that we are using in 2023. We started transferring them in 21 and 22. We booked the flight in 22 and we're using it for this year. That's one example of a really great transfer bonus that's gonna work out for us great. Here's a second one. This is 40% from Iberia to, um, excuse me, from American Express to Iberia. And one of the sweet spots for Iberia is Los Angeles and Chicago to Madrid. You can fly in business class for 40 42,500 avios. So you can see in the lower left hand, we booked that, but because of the 40% transfer bonus, we only had to use 31,000 Amex points. So we were able to fly from Los Angeles, which is not far from us. We did a transitioning, uh, a transitioning flight to Los Angeles and then got on board an Iberia flight, got to Madrid in business class, lay flat for 31,000 Amex points. This I think is probably our best redemption of in recent years. But like I said, we, we did the, uh, you can see from my post in 2021, I called it out to friends. We did the transfer and then we booked the flight and we made the flight last September. And we used it both directions. Um, so a little bit about Chase. We love Chase. Um, we've opened, I think, 28 total cars including one from my mother-in-law. I have, uh, when my mother was, a mother-in-law was about 98 years old, I signed her up for a card and we've been using her points. Uh, so we started with Chase in 2016 when they announced the 100,000 point uh, sign-up bonus for the Chase Sapphire Reserve. I applied and got turned down. Uh, and we've been doing it for about five years and that was a little, uh, a bit of a surprise for me. Uh, I went down to a branch and I opened up a Chase private client account, which is basically a highfalutin checking account, and reapplied and got approved. Uh, my wife got approved right off the bat. And since then, we've got hard on Chase. A couple of sweet spots for us personally is, you know, of course, you can transfer to United. We're United Hub, Star Alliance. And as I mentioned previously, the transfer bonus is to Air France. And then Amex, we're also heavily in Amex, both personal and business cards. Our sweet spot there is, again, transferring to Air France and Iberia, and we combine those with our chase points. So when we got started, we were both working, and we were just basically flying internationally twice a year. But what, to us, was the holy grail was being able to fly free, and we started with a Southwest Companion Pass in 2012. And we used it quite a bit and we kept generating them every two years. And we ended up flying free for about nine years with one extra year because of the COVID. And uh, we got a lot of use out of it. And that was just fantastic. The idea that we could fly free, uh, basically one of us could fly free for nine years. And our companion pass strategy is pretty straightforward. Opening two cards, Generally, the business card is a little bit tougher to get. So we would open that card first in November. And then we would open the personal card. And this is just one player. Open a second card, a personal card, in December. <clears throat> and then we would complete the sign-up bonus in early January on both cards. We have a property tax payment due in January. And we also use a quarterly federal tax payment to meet those sign-up bonuses. And when you do that, as a lot of people know, you get the companion pass where your companion flies free through the end of the following year. So almost for a full two years. And for us, it was great for positioning for international flights out of either Chicago or Los Angeles. Um, there's a lot of flights to Hawaii from Oakland. And we're lucky in that we can fly out of both Oakland and San Francisco quite easily. And there's a lot of Southwest flights out of those two hubs. It was great for visiting national parks, especially on the West Coast. And we are in the two player mode where one person would open two cards. And then two years later, the other person would open two cards. And we get asked a lot of questions about annual fees. 
And this is one case where we would pay the annual fee on the Southwest card for a second year. Uh, you know, it's $95, $149. It wasn't a lot. And our relationship with Chase is really, really important. And we didn't want to ever upset them. So we felt like paying the annual fee for a second year was strategic. And it also got us some boarding credits, which we often used. So we love Southwest. Uh, we love Chase. Uh, we love the Companion Pass. And that was a great experience for us for nine years. Okay. So having done this now for you know, about 12 going on 13 years, um, we have a good idea of what's a good versus a great versus a terrible redemption. Um, and again, we're in San Francisco, so a lot of our flights are international. We want to get across the pond as soon as possible. We don't want to get stuck domestically. So we're trying to get across an ocean to another continent on our very first flight out of San Francisco. So when we're booking economy and for the first eight or nine years, we booked all our flights in economy. Uh, we think that if you can get to another continent or between 30 and 42,000 miles, that's a good redemption and we're gonna book it. If you can get to another continent in economy for 15,000 to 29,000 miles, that's a great redemption and we would jump on that immediately. Um, for us, flying to another country, another continent, and it costing us more than 40,000 miles, that's not a great redemption, and we're probably not going to book it. Um, when COVID hit, we, uh, we didn't fly, obviously, and then we started flying as soon as we got vaccinated. We were a little leery about flying next to folks uh, in economy, and we started flying business class and burning through miles quicker. And that was a bit of a shock at how much more expensive business class was. But it's a much better experience. And uh, it's been delightful. So we've been flying up front since COVID and burning through a lot more miles. So we know that if we can get a redemption in business class, it flies us to another continent between 42 and 75,000 miles. That's a freaking great redemption. We're going to jump on it every time, all day, all night. Uh, anything above you know, 80 to 90 is, is a really, really good redemption. We're seeing Air France from San Francisco to, to Europe is about 80,000 miles. Um, and we'll book that. For us, because we have some flexibility, anything no, more than 90,000 miles of business class is not a great redemption, not a good use of points. And we're going to skip it. We're going to pass. So these are just some broad guidelines. They work well for Europe. They work decently for Asia. They work decently for Africa and Australia. Um, I think based on where you're located, you're going to need to come up with just sort of your own general rules and keep those in the back of your mind. Eric, this is a round trip? Each way. Each way, okay. Each way. Like I would say 30,000 miles for me to go to Europe is pretty standard. At least it is on United, 33, 36,000 miles. So we were doing that for 10 years. Um, every once in a while, like on Air France, there'll be a monthly award promo. We can get to Europe for less than 30,000 miles. That's a great one-way redemption for us to another continent. Any other questions, Amy? You got it? Okay. I'm going to move on. Whoops. Um, so we maintain a buffer of about a hundred, half a million to a million points, Chase, Amex, few American Airlines points. Um, we love the flexibility to transfer to other airlines as they offer uh, transfer bonuses or specific deals on specific destinations. And as most of you know, Chase transferred to 11 different airlines and Amex transfers to 17 different airlines. This is what we thought was a great deal. This was last April. I woke up, frequent miler posted, hey, you can go almost anywhere in the world for 60,000 uh, United points. Um, one way, each way. We had never been to India. It had long been on our bucket list. 
So immediately we booked round trip, San Francisco to Delhi, and then home, we came Mumbai back to San Francisco, flew us around the world in business class for 120,000 miles. Um, just popped up, we had the points, or we were able to transfer to United quickly, booked it as soon as possible. Uh, we got back, our trip was in January into early February, and it was fantastic. So a good example of having points in a flexible currency that you could jump on. And this is for us was trip of a lifetime to get to go to India in business class, which ended up being, you know, 24 to 30 hours of flying. And uh, it was great to do it up front in lay flat seats. Uh, we love Air France, great flights to Europe. You know, we connect in Paris to go to Rome or Scandinavia or, you know, anywhere in Europe. Um, they release promo awards on the first business day of every month. I used to think it was the first of the month, but it looks like it's the first of the month falls on a weekend. They wait till Monday. Um, the current ones they announced back on February 1st. For us, we were in it. San Francisco, fly to Europe anytime in the next six months for 15,000 miles. And that was sort of incredible. We shared it with friends. We know some friends that booked it. So we look for these in the first of every month to see what Air France is offering for West Coast uh, cities. And as I said before, both Amex and Chase transferred to Air France. Also, there's this weird little map that Air France has called the rewards map, put in how many miles you have, put in where you wanna fly from, and it'll tell you the minimum amount of miles it'll take to get there. So it, it's not always available, but like a ward hacker, it gives you the minimum amount of miles. So we use this to get an idea of how many miles we need if we want to go someplace. Example here is if you wanted to fly to Sofia in business class, you would need 65,000 miles minimum. We all know most times it's, it's way higher. But if I wanted to go to Sofia about a year prior, I would start looking for flights to Sofia from San Francisco and seeing how available those 60,000 uh, mile tickets are, are, and if we know when we gonna when we want to go, we'll snap one up as soon as as soon as the day becomes available. So about a year before a flight, we'll start looking for those award tickets. We'll start running scenarios. I know United, depending on whether it's daylight savings or not daylight savings, releases tickets at ten o'clock or at eleven o'clock at night. So if I'm looking for a United flight. One year prior, I'll be on at 10 o'clock, ready to book my tickets. If I know there's a flight that's going to become available, let's say, for 60,000 miles. Um, I think Air France is roughly about a year. And so we're often booking one year in advance on the day, sometimes the hour and the minute that an airline is releasing a ticket. Uh, we find that there's good availability on the first day and the first hour, and those tickets go fast because there's other people like us, you know, booking those same tickets. A um, couple resources, Milesfeed, and I don't know who, who publishes this, but milesfeed.com is a fantastic aggregator for um, blogs. And I'm on it three times a day, and it lists dozens of blogs and all the articles they've posted the last couple of days. And it's a fantastic resource. Uh, they have a, a Twitter account, but I, I have no idea who it is. But uh, I would love to thank them because it's fantastic. Um, for people who are getting started, I always recommend the course at 10X Travel. They have a great course on how to get started in this hobby. And then again, there's so much content in dozens of Facebook groups, Go With Less, uh, Frequent Miler, I love FBZ, I love Travel Rewards, Miles to Memories. I was on listening to Amy and Tim's interview yesterday. And so you can just search points and miles and Facebook and there's dozens of groups and some are better than others, but I, I enjoy seeing all of them in my feed. Some outliers, some things that we do that not everybody does. Um, after we apply for a new card and we don't get immediate approval, we always call the next day. Um, and we know it's gonna be Chase or Amex 
in our case, and we'll get on the line, the reconsideration line, and we'll ask, is there anything else you need from us to process our application? And we found 99% of the time we get approved on that call. They want to confirm our income or our address or whatever. They sometimes will give us the opportunity to move some credit around from an existing card to a, another card. It also gives us, us the opportunity to offer to take a lower credit limit to get approved. So we've been very successful for this. I think this is a little, um, I think this is definitely an outlier. Not everybody does this. We do it all the time. Um, I pay my balances off every two to three days. Um, I have not seen an issue in my credit scores. My wife pays her balances off monthly. Um, we just, we just feel different about seeing, you know, credit balances. And we don't really sweat how many cents per point we're getting in a redemption. I see it online in a lot of Facebook groups and I don't think it's a great data data point, so we don't get wrapped up on it. Uh, we know what we feel for our situation is a good or a great redemption, and uh, we book on what we think is is good or great based on our experience. So we don't spend a lot of time uh, looking at you know cents per point. It's just not worth it for us. We don't compare what we're doing to others, so we're we're really happy with what we've been able to do. I think that's it. Okay, I'm back. And there have been a lot of questions. So thank you for all of that. I have my own questions. I've been writing notes here on my phone. Um, and I had come in with some questions. So first, we're going to get into my questions. If there's time, then I'm going to go into uh, what the people have asked throughout, uh, throughout the session. Okay, so thank you. And I'm just going to get right into it because we're going to keep this to one hour and it's over whether or not all the questions are answered. Um, okay, so be, I, I would be remiss to, to not start with the this plug that we keep Go With Less totally free because we're credit card affiliates. So we hope that you'll use our links for credit cards. So if you are applying for any credit card in the US, a bank card, please ping me for our links. You don't pay anything extra. And like I said, that's how we keep everything at Go With Less free. Okay, um, another thing, uh, Eric has mentioned that he has a lot of credit cards, how many he's had in his lifetime, how many he has now. People hear that we have about three dozen active credit cards and they're totally scared by that they can't do this. You might not be able to do this at the exact same level that uh, that others who do a lot of it are doing, but that doesn't mean that you can't get extreme value from doing this, even with a couple credit cards. So if anyone on this call is using a debit card, um, stop that right now and get onto a new sign-up bonus. And as Eric mentioned, the way to go is with new sign-up bonuses. Uh, Tim used to fly for business weekly. And he'd say for him to travel 100,000 miles was on a plane all the time, all year, 100,000 miles. You can get that with the pretty much with the Chase Inc. cards right now. There's not even an annual fee. So, and it's not even a high spending uh, at $6,000 in three months. So, like the the answer is new sign up bonuses, and as Eric mentioned, you're always working on these new sign up bonuses, um, like always. And I'm gonna I know that there are questions asking, do you pay fees sometimes? He mentioned his um, his property taxes, and it, we we do that this with our income taxes, uh, Eric. You 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 weigh the difference, and sometimes you do pay a fee to put things on a card, right? Exactly. I know in in the case of federal income tax. When you make a credit card payment, the fee is about 1.9%, a little bit less than 2%. So if we're going to get $1,000 of value out of, a, out of a card, we'll pay you know, $50 in fees or $100 in fees. We're the same. And so I think that there's this misconception in this travel hacking space of a couple of things. Number one, that you can't pay anything to make your, we just bought a new roof. We had to pay about 3% of a premium. We, and on, on a different thing that we're working on, we looked at the numbers. Does it make sense for us to pay 3%? We don't want to pay 3%, but yeah, the answer at the end was we got a lot more than the 3% out of it. We paid the 3% to use our credit card versus just a transfer from our checking account. Um, 
So, uh, yeah, um, I also want to mention um, something you're, you were talking about is uh, you have all these points banked. You have like a, a half million to a million points ready to go. And I think this is crucial. So in our group, uh, I'll put up sometimes when there's a killer deal and I'll get a lot of comments saying, how do I sign up for cards for this? You have like one hour to book this stuff. And so you you like do not delay a if you see me put up a good deal. Book it immediately. Um, generally, I'm not going like, to be on the hook for this, but generally you can cancel within 24 hours. So check your plans, check your spouse, like book it and then check and be ready to cancel it if it doesn't work out. Um, and again, I, I don't know about international carriers, but in the US, you book a flight, you can cancel this, no questions asked. It's not about their T's and C's. It's just like uh, within a day, 24 hours, you can cancel, no penalties. Um, so jump on it. That means you need points ready to go across all kinds of, we call them currencies, like Eric was mentioning. He has Amex, he has Chase, he has uh, city uh, thank you points. Um, we have the same as well as in a lot of airline programs, hotel programs, um, because we're, we're full-time travelers, that makes some sense. So be, uh, so be looking at, at those um, opportunities when, when they're posted or when you bump into them, do not delay. Do not delay. And again, like the time to start gathering those points isn't when the deal comes out, it will be gone. So, uh, so get those banked like on the early side. And another thing I want to say, which Eric, I know agrees with is don't be afraid of paying credit card annual fees. We pay maybe close to $3,000 this year on this, but the value that we get from them is significantly higher. So we are very careful with our spending and we are very considerate of our points and miles. Similarly, uh, we pay, both of us have a $700 credit card with Amex Platinum because not only are the points worth it to us, but the uh, we like that we think we get better Amex offers. We're, we're booking a cruise today on Celebrity we're going to get $700 worth of um, membership rewards and mixed points back from that. That pays for our card even after the after we've renewed and we don't even have the sign up bonus uh, points coming anymore. But uh, just the offers themselves make sense for us to keep some of these big uh, ticket cards. So, so don't be scared of the high value. I will say, we've said this a lot, we do not sign up for a new card unless the value we're getting after all payments uh, with the annual fee is over $500. That is our minimum, minimum. Do you have something, uh, Eric, that, that you're, you have a boundary? No, I would agree. And, you know, you, we haven't talked about Chase 524, but you know, Chase, we get a lot of value from Chase, so you want to stay below 524 in case they offer something that's worthwhile. Um, yeah, you just just want to be able to hit those big bonuses when they get when they become available and as soon as possible because you don't know how long it'll be around. So we hit them immediately. Do you have some criteria though that? As you have a lot of cards, you say, we're not signing up for a new card unless it gives me X, Y, Z in value. And maybe you don't. We have ours is a hard 500. Yeah, well, it's, you know, it's, it's generally over 80,000 miles. You know, it's, it's it's a little work to juggle all these cards. So if we're only yet 40,000, 60,000 miles, it may not be worth our time right now. Um, but for friends who are starting, the low um, annual fee cards is what I kind of recommend because it gets them over that hump. And then when they book their first flight, they kind of get it. So I'll start with, I'll start friends off on low annual fee cards, but most of our cards are bigger annual fees, bigger miles, because we know if we're going to get 150,000 miles and then we add a 30% transfer bonus, you know, it's putting us over 200,000 miles. We're going to pay $800, you know, every day. Yeah. And uh, there is a little note here. Um, if you're active military, consider that many card uh, credit card companies do provide that uh, for free. So that's a really nice benefit. What is a transfer bonus? And how do you, and, and I know you gave some of your resources, how are you finding out about those? Sure. So when, when you go on to Chase and you look at your points, uh, they'll give you a myriad of ways to use those points, some good and some bad. And one of the ways you can use your chance chase points or your American Express points is to tr transfer to an airline partner. 
So for Chase, you can transfer to United. They'll, you can transfer 80,000 Chase points. And almost instantly, when you do this transfer on the Chase website, they'll show up in your United account. So your Chase points will go down 80,000 points and your United points will go up 80,000. And it's a little scary the first time you do it, but the more you do it, you'll see the points move over nearly instantaneously. And now you've got points in your United account that you can go use to book a flight. Uh, they all have multiple airlines. So occasionally, usually a couple times a year, uh, the credit card companies in cooperation with the airline companies will give you a bonus above the one-to-one -one transfer ratio. Uh, one of the examples I used was 40% from Amex to Iberia. We transferred 31,000 Amex MR points to our Iberia account. When the 31,000 moved over, we had 42,000 Iberia points because of the 40% transfer bonus. So these are a periodic bonus, usually available for about one month that takes your points in your transferable currencies and escalates them in your airline accounts. Um, so it's, it's kind of like getting free money. Here's $100 and turning into $130, 30% bonus. Here's something to mention is once you move those points to Iberia, A, it could take, sometimes it's instantaneous, but it, it usually says it's going to take, I don't know, not just Iberia, all the hotel, all the transferable programs. This may take 24 to 48 hours. It's often instantaneous, but the idea is maybe it takes two days. And once you move your points, you cannot move them back. So we have points yeah. in Iberia now and during COVID and we have, they've been sitting, we had a, a canceled flight in Iberia. We haven't been flying anything on Iberia. So, um, so that's just something like everything doesn't always work so perfectly. So say Eric transferred points to Iberia and it took a day and the deal he wanted is gone. Well, he didn't get to book his deal and his points are at Iberia. So the fact that he has so many points and that he travels a lot, hopefully this means it's not the biggest deal in the universe. But again, like this is, this isn't like, it will always work out so perfectly. Um, but just, just a heads up with, with that guy that you kind of have to have that like flexibility that, right. I think there's also a, another pitfall, and I don't have data points for this on transfers. I think a lot of people will just try a trial transfer and move a thousand miles over just to see how it works. And then they'll go back and do another transfer. And I have a gut feeling that doing multiple transfers very closely will push a fraud review in that account. And the second transfer won't go through as quickly. No data points. It is my gut feeling. I do one transfer. I do all my points as much as I, as I possible. I don't do multiple transfers. I think the second one gets slowed down. And you can't, you oh, yeah. So if you move it to Iberia and the miles expire again, they're it, they're, they're, then they're gone. So you can also book on Iberia. You don't have to just be flying. I, like you can book on Iberia maybe for, I don't know, an American Airlines flight from uh, California to New York. You might still be able to book that with your Iberia miles on Iberia. So, uh, just yeah, just it's something just to consider. Um, here's a question, uh, think, Eric. Do you? Oh, go ahead. Wait, can I just one more thing on transfer bonuses? I think one of the rules we all go by is don't transfer unless you know you have a flight on the transfer airline that you're going to book immediately. I'll fudge that sometime by a couple of months. Like I know I'm going to Europe in 2024. So if, if, if there was a transfer bonus to Air France today, I would transfer those miles knowing I might use them five or six months from now. That's bending that rule a little bit not to transfer unless you have a specific redemption. That is a good, good tip there. Um, uh, Rachel asks, do you ever buy airline or hotel points? Uh, and what's like when, 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 and if so, like what bonus, when do you strike? Right. So uh, I think this is the, this is in 2021. Uh, Thin Air announced you could buy a lot of points. And I think it was two grand. So we bought enough points for two round trip tickets from LA to like Stockholm or Helsinki, I think for $2,000. And it gave us, uh, you know, one world status. And uh, we basically priced what it would cost us to get to Scandinavia business class 
on the West Coast. And it was many thousands of dollars pretty much any time of year. So we thought, well, for $2,000, we can get two round trip tickets to Scandinavia. And then we were able to use, they also gave us some upgrade um, passes. So when we booked economy flights in Scandinavia from one country to another, we were able to upgrade to business class. So in 11 years, we've done it once. We bought points, oh no, wait, we bought points for Conrad, for the Maldives twice. So we don't do it often. And we're looking at that. We're living in hotels for close to four months right now. We blow through yeah. points very quickly when you're doing that many nights. Even when we have very low point redemptions, we're in these amazing five-star Hyatts, amazing resorts, 5,000 points a night. This is worth $75 of in cash value. This is like insanity. It's like they're giving it to us for free. Um, but we are looking at like if, if Hyatt had a, any kind of bonus, we might be buying those Hyatt points. And we, uh, we, we need, we, we, when we buy points, it's just a top off a little bit. So we did, we bought IHG points, just a, like a couple, maybe 5,000 points or something. So we're not buying any big bulk quantity, but the answer uh, about for us would be, what is the cash value of those points? So we value our Hyatt points at 0.015 uh, per Hyatt point. And if we got a better deal than that, then we would be buying Hyatt points. It, we haven't seen that. So we don't buy Hyatt points in bulk. Yeah. So yeah, um, we only did it once in air. It was, it was a one-off. It was a question. How early is it early to book flights? As early as they open up, as Eric tells you. So here, um, how do you find out about, uh, like, so when United opens up, like some are 330 days, some are 365 days. How do you know when that they open up and to get on it? A lot of bloggers will have the number of days in advance so that an airline opens up. So if I know I want to fly in United, I can go to a blog. It'll tell you that United opens their schedule up on 350 days. Now, some United partners like Lufthansa and Swiss are different. So the first day that United offers a flight, Lufthansa may not offer that, or Swiss may not offer that route for another 15 or 20 days because they're at 330 days where United's at 350. So for United, like I know they're 350 days or I – I don't know the exact number I used to. So when I know my day is coming up, about a week prior to my day, I'll start looking every day. And I believe it's at 10 o'clock when they release the new tickets. And I'm looking at how many miles are releasing for that next day's flight for that week prior to my day. Okay. So I'm running that scenario on a daily basis at 10 o'clock when they release the next day's flights. Excellent. And uh, so I'm going to, I'll do, I'll be Googling and we just missed. So we loved Asia. We're loving Asia so much. We want to come back. We were going to go to South America next winter. We're not, we're coming back to Asia. And by the time we figured that out, it was already past the window. So we are flying back in premium economy that we had that same deal. You flew to India. We got on that deal to Bangkok and now we are spoiled. And uh, for 40 hours of traveling, business class was was definitely the way to go. And we're not and people will say, like, I'm not I don't just give I don't care about like I don't drink. I don't care about having unlimited champagne. That is not why I want business class. I, I don't I don't think I drink anything uh, alcohol. Uh, and I found this extremely valuable. I had the easiest jet lag I've ever had. Uh, and, I, and I didn't get much Great. sleep. I think I had a couple hours, but a couple hours is better than the zero hours I get sleeping in an economy seat. Uh, I don't sleep sitting up. Um, so Eric, is there any other than like the, the luxury of it? Like, what do you, which the luxury is huge. What do you really find so valuable in, in spending all these business class uh, ticket uh, points on, on those? We, we didn't move up front until COVID and we didn't want to fly next to strangers and we didn't know their either their vaccination status or their COVID status. So we started flying in business class because my mother-in-law is 99 years old. We would be around her. We couldn't afford to get COVID. So that's when we started spending more points and it was hard. But as you said, lay flat's amazing as far as recovering from jet lag. And also when we get to a destination, we're in better shape on that first day, that second day when we've been in lay flat, we don't care about having a door. We don't care about the drinks. We don't care about the food. We just want lay flat and we don't want strangers sitting next to us. When we were back in economy, we looked for, like 242 configurations where we get two seats by ourselves and not three seats, like the A350, 
upper deck economy has two seats by themselves. Some of the back of some planes have two seats by themselves just because it's more comfortable not to sit next to a stranger. But definitely once COVID started, we couldn't afford to sit next to people. We didn't know if they were vaccinated. So that's when we started sitting up front and burning a lot more points. No doubt. Um, now I do, uh, there's, I'm gonna do some, I'm gonna answer some of these kind of rapid fire questions that have come up uh, at the beginning. So number one, uh, it talks about like are single people doing this. So here in our, at our resort in Bali, we are here with a friend of ours, Julie. She is an expert at travel hacking. She often contributes on our Friday calls. She's solo. She's as, as, as in depth as I've ever seen anybody. So the answer, so where Eric talks about this player one, player two, that really is convenient and helpful that you can kind of double uh, what you're doing, but absolutely you could do this as a solo single person. No problem. You might just have a little bit of a different strategy. Like I'm going to sign up for a card for uh, in the first month, four months later, Tim signs up for a card three months later, it's like we ping pong back and forth. So you just have a different strategy and you're welcome to reach out to the, uh, to us, uh, to me, per uh, particularly on Facebook. If you said, Hey, I'm solo. I want to have a strategy. I, and I know tons of people who are doing this solo. So that's not something that should chase you off. And then also, uh, at, at Eric mentioned, uh, um, so about the business cards, you don't, so we said this, we had a video come out Know, like a month ago about 10 things about being a the 10 tips for brand new travel hacking and one of them was about business cards and tim kind of side joke like if you don't have a business you should start one for the business cards and i don't really think that that's a joke like and you don't have to have a big deal business it doesn't need to be an official llc or or incorporated or anything just you have a blog now you have a, and, and maybe and so and you 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 or you have an airbnb you rent out your home all of these things are businesses. They don't have to be like a uh, what you're, what people have traditionally thought of. Get thinking creatively. It sells something on eBay. You have a business. Um, okay. How do I you use that one thing about player one, player two? Referrals between players are another great way to earn extra points. Um, yes. We both opened Chase Inc. cars five years ago. I opened one, referred my wife for the second one. I closed mine in December because we wanted to churn those for the 90000 my wife referred me back. We're going to close hers and I'll refer her for her second set. So two players, referral bonuses are great. Okay. And I will say that word churn is a real hard one in the credit card space. The credit card issuers really hate that word. So so we, we try to avoid the word churn because the, the word uh, the idea of churn is like you you close it, you open it over and over again, and they will sometimes shut you down, take back your points. So so careful. And so what so when you're doing it over years, that's one thing, but definitely be very careful. Um, like American Express has um, has language that you once you open up this card, you can't get a sign up bonus again. So uh, so yeah, so there's some some cards are trying to to mitigate that. But those those inks that are, I think now they're offering ninety thousand points, which is a huge bonus. Um, we'd had those cards for five years. I closed it, reapplied for the ninety thousand point bonus. <laughs> I'm gonna put down uh, when you had mentioned that you like to start people off with a low annual fee. Whether or not you're starting off or not, these Chase inks are awesome. I'm going to put some links. I put them up in the Go With Less group. I'm going to put them in the description when this video comes out in that uh, in the in the video. But uh, but the, the, there are amazing business offers happening right now. Uh, that's one of the best values happening in the space. Uh, let me know if you. I, I put the links up. But I'm happy to like send them send over to me. No annual fee. This is like unheard of. Um, so so ask me if you want that link. Uh, also, uh, so are you paying annual fees on? those 27 open cards with Eric. I'm just going to, because we're going to run out of time. So so the answer is some yes, some are free. Um, uh, is it worth it? And the answer, like, and there's a couple of people who say like, how do you know when to close or open a card, uh, keep it open? And we look at year by year, is there value that we're getting from this card? So $700 annual fee on Amex, that's harder to, to come over. And we're not looking after the first year sign up bonus, we want to have at least $500. After it renews, we don't need that $500 year after year, we're not going to get that. So what we want is does it make sense? Do we we don't want to be paying for this card, if we're not at least breaking even. And, uh, and so maybe we have lounge access, we value that we have money that we, we put toward uh, valuing that as a monetary thing. Um, there's free annual nights for all of our, our hotel cards. Uh, if we pay $69 
$99 or $99 annual fee on a Hyatt card uh, and we get a free night, then we know that we're going to, we have at least seven of those hotel cards for free annual nights. Um, so, so we kind of, we look at each card, but and then, and, and those big ticket cards, we've renewed many, we had Chase Reserve, preferred uh, Chase Sapphire reserve we had that for like four years uh paying those fees because we like the lounge like because we like the lounge access and it made sense for us and that's a great earner 3x and a lot of travel expenses that's a great great earner yeah we did go down we did downgrade um and then i applied for the sapphire preferred when they just had their big bonus just last year so uh but i i did we did maintain that card for me for a long time you had an example of a sweet spot is to fly to like lax you said it about i think chicago how do you like find do you just how do you find about the departure location if you're not going to fly from your home airport other airports I, like I said, the miles feed website aggregates all these great mileage blogs, Facebook groups call out these good deals in other airports. So I think I'm just attuned to it, but it's, it's reading a lot of blogs, being active in Facebook groups. Yeah. And, uh, and then Google, you can Google sweet spot award redemption for your, whatever airport you're looking at. And I'm hoping that people on this call, there's not an, I know, I meet people in hotels from the Go With Less group that aren't putting up their redemptions in the group. Put up your redemptions every Friday. Show us your pictures of your room. Show us your seat picture. It doesn't have to be incredibly swanky. If you got a, a free hotel night because of your points and miles, it doesn't, we're our next hotel is going to be the Holiday Inn Express. I'm not expecting it to be uh, five-star fabulous, but it's still, it's free and it's in Singapore, which is really expensive. So uh, put it up. Put it every Friday. I do it. Um, here's another question. We could um, do an hour on. We could do an hour on resources, but I want to call out doctorofcredit.com yeah. is a great resource on transfer bonuses and good deals. Tim uses that heavily. Um, Lisa asks, "How much do you need uh, in order to do a transfer?" I think it's usually in like thousand point increments. Uh, so when you're transferring from Chase or Amex, it, like it's it's it, you can't do like two hundred and eighty two. It's a thousand, uh, rounding up to the nearest thousand. Is that what you find? Yes, exactly. Okay. Um, Nancy asks, uh, and I think we're going to maybe make this one, we're going to be wrapping it up in a second. What are the cancellation policies? Um, and again, I, I mentioned like the, the 24 hour, we're not talking about that. So if you have to cancel, uh, especially in this after COVID, have you had to cancel? What are you finding uh, when you have points? And we haven't. I know Air France is 50 euros. Uh, United is pretty much free. So we're looking, we're, we booked premium economy. We're looking for uh, business, uh, but we booked with, we booked Cathay Pacific with American points. We're open to, to canceling that and planning on those points being fully redeposited if we find a good business redemption. And one thing you had mentioned about like, sometimes the, the deals are good and then they go away and then they're good. I am actually not really finding that. So like that, when you have a really good, like that 60,000 on United, that is not coming back. No. Now, what I meant so was sometimes, like, yeah. sometimes close in, what I meant was sometimes close into a flight, business awards might come down a little bit. Close so when in. you find to like a, a killer, yeah. yeah. I mean, when but you you're right, like killer, killer deals thing. once in a lifetime. So, um, so Lisa asks, how do we, as nomads, how do we get our cards? We have a service. Whoever gets your mail, whether it's a friend or a, ma a good mail service, we have them take a photocopy of the front and back of the card. We did a video about a year ago about how we did $21,000 of spending with no cards in hand. They weren't added to our Apple wallet. They were all online, all of our spending. And we're not like crazy spenders. So, so th that's a video to maybe check out. Uh, about, it just gives you creative ideas of how to meet minimum spending. When we were in Europe and did cards. Um, that's very easy. We added them to our, uh, I have Apple wallet, uh, Tim has Google pay, add those immediately and uh, via the credit card uh, website. So chase uh, on each card, not every card does this, but on uh, a lot of my cards, it says like, there's basically some version of like link this up to your Apple wallet. I spent like $5 cash in Europe for the whole summer. And we just used Apple wallet for everything. And we're able to hit bonuses, never seeing the cards, never having them in hand. Um, is this is on the uh, Chase Sapphire Reserve? Is the 3x travel 
only for purchases on the trace portal or general charges. And that's for general charges. So if you're charging, I don't know, airlines um, or anything, that, that Chase Reserve gives you three points for every dollar spent. And many cards do this, like some do promoted, uh, like uh, elevated for grocery shopping, for gas, for office supply stores, for travel, for dining. So, uh, so it's good to kind of see, we don't get too embroiled in that because we are working on sign-up bonuses. So, uh, so if you do a lot of this three times uh, your points on travel, that means you're not working on a, a good sign-up bonus. So, uh, so we, 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 we do that a bit, but more, th more than anything, it's all about the sign-up bonuses. So whether you're watching on YouTube or if you've attended our live here in the group, we hope that if you have any questions, please ask down below in on the video description, ask in the group for all these kinds of travel related questions. So we are better if we are learning from each other. Uh, so I wanted to thank Eric so much for his time. This, he put together this PowerPoint. I just asked like, hey, can you come on for a casual conversation? He's not in this blogging, vlogging space. He said, sure, I'll be happy to do it. And he did that great PowerPoint and and and, and was happy to share all of his uh, information with us. So we are incredibly grateful as a group to you, Eric, because uh, you, you hit it out of the park. So uh, questions, ask them again in Go With Less, ask them on our YouTube videos and we'll see you, we'll see you soon. Thanks, Eric. See you soon. Hasta Thank luego. You, Amy. Thank you.